oftentimes this is how we look in our lives. We're holding something that is cool, it's great. We've gone comfortable. We've, got, we've, we've, we've really gotten attached to something. But what God has for us is so much bigger and it's so much greater. Now for him to receive the new, Jordan has to let go of that. For him to receive the thing that God has prepared for him. Now this is the thing about God. God will tell you the promise, but God won't always show you the promise. How many of you just can't stand that sometimes about God? God says we live by what? Faith. We don't live by sight. So, 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 so Jordan doesn't see the promise. Jordan has to trust the promise giver. And he's got to make a faith move just like you do in your life. To receive, to go to the next level, it will require a faith move. A faith move where Jordan must set down and let go of Paco, whom he's loved for a long time. You must put him down, Jordan. And I know it's tough for you. I know this is hard. Letting go of, let, letting go of this thing that you've gone to attack. He must let go. Now, this is what's tricky. Is oftentimes, like the Israelites, when they were delivered, when they, when they were released from slavery, there is a period of time. And it's in this waiting period, this is where it gets hard for people. Because oftentimes we think right when we let go, drop it, right when we let go, God's going, here you go. But God often doesn't work like that, does he? God often wants to make sure that when we release and, and make this faith move, is Jordan's heart prepared for this? Is he strong enough to hold this? Does he have the humility and the character and everything that is required to sustain life with the greater that God has for him. And some of us carry our past around just like that, thinking this is what all that God has for me. It's really hard to believe God for that husband of yours that you, that you have in your mind. You've just, you've dreamt of when you're holding on to that. Some of you are holding on to that and God has this because God has something greater with your name on it. With your name on it. In order to receive God's immeasurable blessings, what am I willing to let go of in areas in my life? Or better yet, let me rephrase that question. And do you trust him enough to surrender the known securities of your life for the unrevealed mysteries of God's blessings. To follow God's calling, it will require us to surrender good things in life for better things with kingdom impact. Sometime God will ask you to give up good for better. And that is always a struggle that we will always have, but know that God is good and God will always act accordingly to his purpose. We clear out space so that we can receive his blessings. What are you still holding on to? What is it that you are unwilling to let go of? You must create a space for the good that you desire. I would hate to guess that the number of people that would love to meet and greet and love and and, and, and have a meaningful relationship with someone and they're never going to do it until they let go of that old relationship. Person may be gone, but the idea is still there. You've got to create a space for the good that you desire. You just must do it. And if you don't, you're never going to have that relationship. You see, sometimes in our lives, we have a relationship or a mindset or a past that if we don't let go of it, if we don't separate from it, if we don't release it, it can be detrimental to our growth. It can stifle what God wants to do. And it can ultimately keep us from the best that God wants to usher us into. We all go through disappointments and things that are not fair. And it's easy to hold on to the hurts and think about what they said, and relive the offense. We get up in the morning, it's the first thing that comes to mind. 
We don't realize how much that's affecting us, souring our attitude, draining our energy, limiting our creativity. If you're going to fulfill your destiny, you have to get good at letting things go. How you deal with these offenses, how you handle the hurts will determine whether you move forward and see the new things God has in store or whether you get stuck bitter over what didn't work out. You see, it's easy to live in the past when you can't see your future. It's easy to live in what was when you can't see tangibly the promise yet that God has for you. You don't know how much future you've got. What's gone is gone. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Some of you have had divorces. Some of you um, have probably had bankruptcies. Some of you have had terrible things happen in the past. But what's gone is gone. It's in the past. And to spend your time focusing on the past is to spend the only thing that you've got, and that's what's right here, right now, because the sand never stops running. This is all we've got. And to spend your time now thinking of what happened there is making absolute certain that the future is going to be the same as the past. All you've got is now. Let the dead bury the dead. Let it go. I don't care how bad it was, let it go. Stop looking back on your life and worrying about the things which have already occurred and which you can no longer alter. You cannot go back and change it, since you cannot let it go. I don't care how justified you may feel in holding a resentment. It's a dumb game. Ray Stanford used to tell me it was like throwing dust into a strong wind at someone else. You know where the dust is going to end up. Let's not look back in anger. Let's quit thinking in reverse, nor forward in fear, but around us in awareness. Life is either a series of endings or a series of beginnings. If you're looking back, it's a series of endings. Look ahead. Something great is coming. Don't fail to prepare for what's next because you're trying to get what was. When the grape comes through the crushing, it knows it will never be a grape again, but it will be wine. I want you to know that it may feel at times that God is silent. It may feel at times that God is clueless or he's taking a break. Or maybe you might feel that he doesn't even care about your future. Not true. The Bible says this, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do for I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? We all have a past that we must let go of that we're coming from. So tonight, maybe for you, it's a relationship. It's a relationship that you are maybe holding on to from your past, maybe from the past season of your life, maybe this past summer, maybe this past school year, I don't know. And you knew that it was unhealthy. And so, and so you broke off that relationship, but now you are in the middle. And you know the promise is, is still there and hasn't changed, but the middle makes it uncertain and uncomfortable. It starts to get lonely on Friday night. It starts to get lonely. Those text messages aren't coming in as often as you hope. And now looking back looks good. Maybe it's a mindset. Maybe it's a perspective. Maybe God took you from a mindset, but now you find yourself carrying some of these same mindsets again. Maybe it's a place you physically left, you moved away and you left the city and being here gets a little bit uncomfortable. It gets a little bit uncertain. It gets a little bit lonely. You don't have the friends you used to have. Work feels a little bit different and, and, and feel like the grass is so much greener and you are still holding on to the past. It's much more freeing when you learn to let things go. It wasn't fair, that's okay. God will be your vindicator. He'll take care of who did you wrong. It's not your job to pay people back. They hurt you once, don't let them continue to hurt you by holding on to it. God saw what happened. 
He heard what they said. He knows what you lost. If you will let it go, he'll make it up to you. He'll give you beauty for those ashes. I believe some of you, you are next door to your promise. You are so close to your promise and you're just one faith release away from stepping into the new levels that God has for you. There's one area that God has on your heart tonight that he's wanting you to let go of. There's one relationship, there's one mindset, there's one past mistake that you can't let go of. And it is keeping you from what is so close to your receiving. It wasn't right what they did, but you're forgiving so you can be free. You don't have to live with that contamination on the inside, let it go. Forgive the person that hurt you, Forgive the parent for what they didn't give you. Let go of the disappointment, the dream that didn't work out. Let go of the guilt, the shame, the regret, the remorse. You can't keep that bottled up and reach your potential. Best thing you can do is to get that toxic waste out of you. Let it go. You have to give it to God. God, I forgive them for what they did. I let go of the hurts, what I lost, what I didn't get. I trust you to make it up to me. You may not know what tomorrow holds, but you can rest when you know who holds it. You may not see the promise, but you can trust the promise giver. You see, what's behind you is no comparison to what God has in front of you. Car makers are brilliant, aren't they? Because car makers understand this principle. The rear of your mirror is so small. The windshield is so big. Why? Because what is in front of you is so much more important than what is behind you. And that is what you must understand as a believer tonight. Some of you, you're holding on to a mistake and it is keeping you from receiving everything that God has for you. I don't know what it is you're holding on to. I don't know if it's a mindset, a habit, a relationship, something that you've walked away from that God called you out of, but you keep lingering, you keep wanting to go back. And I believe that tonight God is saying, what is in front of you is, is no comparison to what is behind you. It's so much greater, it's so much bigger. He's just waiting for you to let go.